Hey there! Welcome to our monthly Ask Me Anything call. I'm so glad you're here and we have so many amazing things to go over during today's call. Okay, so we do this every month here on my Facebook business page where I answer your questions that you've been sending me to uh, my email sage at sagegrayson.com or on social media here on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you're sending me your questions. I've been gathering them up and then I answer them during our calls. If you have a question that you want me to answer during today's call, please be sure to type it into the question box on your screen and uh, I will answer it. Um, first off, I have noticed a trend of uh, questions having to deal with getting stuck. And I think like a lot of my clients feel this way and probably you do too at some time or another where you feel like uh, you're just not making progress where either you can't get through your to-do list or things are piling up or you're feeling unmotivated. So let's just call uh, today's theme, get unstuck, because <laughs> that's what I think we, we need. Um, so it's hump day, it's Wednesday. So let's work on getting through the rest of the week together. Okay, so let me start off with a, a common question that I've gotten. How do I get my work done when I'm feeling exhausted, stressed out, or depressed? Yeah. So uh, I think this is most of us. When you're feeling stressed out, you kind of get that paralyzing feeling like, oh, I've got too much going on. I can't possibly do anything. And, and you just kind of freeze up. Or when you're feeling exhausted, you don't get your work done because you just want to stay in bed all day or you just kind of want to like zone out and watch movies. And if you're feeling depressed, like that is a whole other topic. And I'm not qualified to handle anyone who's like uh, medically depressed or needs to actually see a therapist or some kind of medical professional. So if you do have depression, please make sure that you're seeing someone, a healthcare professional who can really help you treat your depression so that you can move forward and, and handle it. Um, but if you're feeling any of those those things right now, um, stressed, exhaustion, or, or just feeling like, oh, I just can't do my work. I've got a, a really kind of interesting technique that maybe you haven't thought of, but I want you to consider because any progress, no matter how small, is still progress. And that's what we're going for. Oh, hi, Christine. Hi, Tawanda. <laughs> uh, if you guys want to say hello in the comment box, please, please do so. And remember to type your questions in there so I can answer them during the call. Okay, so I, there are a lot of different ways of handling feeling stuck, like you can't move forward. And you've probably heard of the Pomodoro technique, which is where you uh, work for 25 minutes, take a five minute break. Then you work for 25 minutes and then you take a five minute break. And uh, I see a lot of people using that and it working for them. Um, and I think that's good if you're able to actually work for 25 minutes. <laughs> and if you're feeling super stressed out, that might not be possible. Or if you're feeling depressed or exhausted, that might not be possible. Hi, Hiromi. <laughs> um, so there's another technique where you work for 90 minutes and then you take a 10 minute break or work for 90 minutes and then take a 10 minute break, which 90 minutes, if you're feeling totally strung out that that's too long. How are you supposed to work for 90 minutes when you can't focus on anything? So that's not what I do. Another technique, which I have also uh, recommended, and I do sometimes is, uh, well, yeah, yeah, I do generally, is to front load your day. Do all of your most important tasks first thing in the morning. Uh, that way, when things get busy or you get distracted or you're tired after lunch, your most important things are already done. And that's good too. So, okay, let's put this in the category of if you're having a, a normal day and you're functioning, try the Pomodoro technique, try the 90 minutes on 10 minute break or, and try front loading. But what if it's more than that? What if you are really, really, really stuck? Like, oh my gosh, Sage, I can't get any of my work done or it's been a week since I've done any work and I'm freaking out and my head's going to explode. You would not believe how many emails I get from people saying, I'm totally stuck, please, please help me. Okay, so I have a technique that I've been using for years and it's actually become probably my most popular strategy among my clients. And I call it the 10 on, 10 off strategy. 
And I only break this out during my worst, worst days when I'm not making any progress at all. So when you're having one of those days where you have work to do, but oh my gosh, you just can't do it. You're, 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 you're struggling here. Try working on whatever your work is for 10 minutes. Set a timer for 10 minutes and, and work just for those 10 minutes. You can do anything for 10 minutes and, and go for like the really easy win. So let's say you have a project you got to do. Maybe that te first 10 minutes, you're, you're just researching. Or maybe you're just turning on your laptop and, and getting some tea or something. You're, you're getting ready to do your work. Or if your, your work is cleaning your house, maybe that's just picking one room to start in. Um, or, or maybe it's like narrowing your focus to one chair you're going to clean off or whatever it is. So work for those 10 minutes. And then when the timer goes off, have it set for another 10 minutes. And then take that 10 minutes to do something good for yourself. Usually self-care, white space, something that's going to lift you up and give you energy. And the idea is to set a recurring timer, uh, which I will share some of the ones that I've used on my phone. Um, a recurring timer for 10 minutes, then an alarm, then another 10 minutes, an alarm, on and on and on, just repeating 10 minute timers for throughout your whole day. So what I want you to do is do 10 minutes of work. So whatever your projects are, whatever you need to get done, things that drain your energy, and then 10 minutes of play, self-care, things that light you up and give you energy and alternate back and forth, 10 on, 10 off, 10 on, 10 off for the entire day. The thing is, when you know you've got self-care coming in just 10 minutes, you can usually find the strength to push through and do whatever that hard thing is that you've been avoiding doing. Writing your blog post, making that uncomfortable phone call, uh, looking at your finances, whatever it is that you have to do, but you're struggling to do, you only have to get through 10 minutes and then you get 10 minutes of self-care. And then you can do whatever uh, lights you up. You can go for a quick walk. You can uh, get yourself some tea or coffee. You can stretch, do some yoga poses. You can read an article. You can read a book. You can listen to part of a podcast. Whatever it is that you want to do in that 10 minutes of self-care. And then, ding, the alarm will go off again and you do another 10 minutes of work. And I want to be really clear here that... I did say that my clients love the 10 on 10 off and I use it too, but I, I use it sparingly. I only use it on my worst, worst days because doing 10 on 10 off, you still get 30 minutes of actual work done every hour. And I would rather see you inch forward, getting your work done little by little by little by little than become so overwhelmed and so exhausted that you just don't get anything done all day long. You just sit on the couch or you scroll through social media the entire day or you stay in bed sleeping. That's not helping you get to where you want to be. That's not helping you reach your goals. So if you find yourself struggling and having one of those really, really, really horrible days and you're completely stuck, try 10 minutes on and 10 minutes off. And I will say that the app that I use to do my 10 on, 10 off is called Seconds. So it's seconds, just like how you tell time with seconds. So with seconds, you can create custom timers for whatever you want. So I do it for, for my business work and uh, for my self-care breaks. And you can color code each of the, um, the intervals. So like for me, I have business is all pink, self-care is all green. And uh, when I'm doing the 10 on 10 off, so it alternates on my phone, I have like pink and it's got 10 minutes of business work and then it's green, it's 10 minutes of self care and it alternates. Um, it's, it's a really great thing. Most people use the seconds uh, timer for, um, for like intervals for like high intensity interval training, like if you're going to the gym or something, which is great for those of you who go to the gym. <laughs> Sure, I go to the gym sometimes, but I I would prefer to work out at home. But anyway, um, it's great timer for, for anything. I use timers for everything that I work on. So if I'm doing a blog post, I'll set my timer for 30 minutes and then crank out my blog post. If I'm recording a video, I'll, I'll set my timer, like I got an hour to get this video done and, and, and do it within that time period. So just show of hands, how many of you have used the 10 on, 10 off technique before? 
like for your worst day. So at least you're getting something done and, and you can do anything for 10 minutes. Um, I watch uh, the, the show, The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, and she has something in the first season where she says, uh, you can get through 10 seconds all you, and then you get through the next 10 seconds and then you get through the next 10 seconds and that's all you have to do. So it's kind of the same thing. Like your work is important and I don't want you being so exhausted and so stressed out that you don't get any of your work done. You can get 10 minutes done and then you get a break and then you can get another 10 minutes done and then you get a break. And every time you're doing the hard work, you're filling yourself up again the next 10 minutes. So, um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's what I want to say about if you're feeling really stuck or really exhausted, try the 10 on 10 off strategy. And if you want to talk more, you can go to my website and click on work with me. And there's an option for you to sign up for a free 30 minute light editing strategy call. And we can really like go through all of the things that are holding you back, all the things that are stressing you out and figure out how you can keep moving forward despite all the obstacles that are in your way. So check out the free call if you're interested. All right, so, so that's the answer to that question. Next, I've got some quick fixes for to-do list overwhelm. Yeah, <laughs> so this is, since we're, we're doing this call with the theme of getting unstuck, one of the things that might be keeping you stuck is your to-do list. Like, really? Really? Yeah, yeah, our to-do list, we, we think, oh, they're gonna help us like be productive, help us get stuff done. But sometimes your to-do list is the thing that's actually holding you back. And maybe that's because there's too much on your to-do list and it's super, super overwhelming. Um, you might look at your to-do list and it's like 10 pages long. Or worst, worst of all is when your to-do list is on little post-its all over the place. Like it's a post-it over here, it's a post-it over there, it's on the back of an envelope, it's over there. Like you've got like things all over the place. You don't have them consolidated into one to-do list. And that is like super frustrating. Or or, or whatever, maybe the things on your list are broken down and your, your, your next step is too big. Your next step is going to take you three days to finish. That can cause to-do list overwhelm. So if you have to-do list overwhelm, I've got three quick fixes to help you get moving again. So first, <laughs> going back to the life editing process is to delete one thing on your to-do list. So step two of the life editing process is delete bad influences, which is actually what we're learning this week in my life editing for beginners program, which you can find in the clubhouse. Um, deleting one item on your to-do list might not seem like very much, but just the act of crossing something off and saying, this is not happening, this is gone. It's really powerful and it can give you energy to keep going because it's one less thing. It's one less thing on your list. When you say to yourself, okay, I've got to delete one thing on my to-do list, you'll start thinking more focused. You'll look at the things and say, okay, is there anything on here, if I'm being truthful with myself, that doesn't have to get done? Can I cross that off? Is there anything that can wait till next week? Is there anything I can delegate to somebody else? Is there anything I'm obsessing about that's really not my problem and I can freely delete it? Yeah. Um, so really... Be kind, be kind of hard on yourself when you look at your to-do list because if you're overwhelmed, you're not getting stuff done anyway. So, so be hard, <laughs> be focused, and cross one thing off your to-do list. That's your first quick tip. Second quick tip for deleting, <laughs> for getting rid of your to-do list overwhelm is to put a boundary around your time or otherwise set a deadline. So if you're, you're freaking out like, I can't get all this stuff done, come up with some kind of boundary. So let's say you have a whole bunch of things that you need to do. You've got to make a phone call. You've got to write and publish a blog post. Uh, you've got to plan all your meals for next week, whatever it is that you're working on. Put some kind of boundary around your time. So let's say you have to make a phone call. Uh, let's say you, uh, you need to get it done today. Put a boundary around it. Say, I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes and I'm going to get this phone call done in the next 10 minutes. Or I'm going to make this phone call before I go eat lunch. Or I'm going to make this phone call <laughs> before I go to the bathroom next. Whatever it is, put some kind of boundary around it so it doesn't go on and on and on. Like, oh, I have to get to that phone call sometime. Like, then I'll go to the end of the day and then I'll go to the next day and then I'll go to the next day because you didn't put any kind of boundary on it. So put a boundary around your time. 
if you need to write a blog post, I do this too. So whenever I'm writing a blog post, I set a timer for 30 minutes and say, okay, I've got to write this blog post in 30 minutes. And I've only got 30 minutes to do it. So I'm like typing away, trying to race the clock. And is it always the best thing I've ever written? No, <laughs> it might not be, but it's done. It's done. And you know what we say, done is better than perfect. So when you're struggling, when you're not getting things done, you got to you got to get kind of real with yourself. Put a boundary on your time and get the thing done. It's not going to be perfect, but get it done. If you're meal prepping and you don't have 24 hours to chop all the vegetables and saute everything beautifully and put it in all your beautiful little containers, then don't. Then, then make it easy on yourself. Maybe you're using like frozen vegetables <laughs> instead of fresh, or maybe you're using uh, prepared foods rather than, than, than standing in the kitchen sauteing things for an hour. Like, it's okay. Done is always better than perfect. I would rather you get the thing done, even if it's not exactly how you wanted it to be done, and move forward. And then you can move forward to the next thing. All right, and I got one final tip for to-do list overwhelm, is to stop, <laughs> stop working from your master to-do list. And I know a lot of you are guilty of this. There are different kinds of to-do lists. And I know we talked about this in a different Ask Me Anything call, which you can find in the Clubhouse. Uh, all the recordings of the, the uh, Ask Me Anything calls are in the Clubhouse under the Connect section. So we have what is known as a master to-do list, also known as, as a brain dump list. And I encourage my clients just to get everything out of their head. Anything that you need to work on, just write it down. Write it down in one master monster to-do list. And, oh, hi, Kirsten. <laughs> and when you're writing everything down in your brain dump list, it's, it's helping free up space in your head, which is good. You really need to do that. But when you get it all out of your head, you're going to have so many different things. You're going to have home projects. You're going to have career projects. You're going to have business projects. You're going to have things you got to do with your kids. You're going to have like health and fitness stuff. You're going to have all sorts of stuff on your master to-do list. And when you have that master to-do list in front of you, like, ugh, no wonder you're feeling stuck. No wonder you're not getting anything done. Don't work from a master to-do list. Instead, look at your master to-do list briefly, pick the projects that are important to get done during this week, and then pick just a couple, two, three things that you absolutely have to get done today and write it on a smaller to-do list. That could be like one single post-it note. Or if you're using any kind of like project management software, put that in the today section or for like Trello or Asana or whatever you're using, put it in the today section. And the, only those things are what you need to look at. You look at your daily to-do list, you do not look at your master to-do list. Because looking at your master to-do list is going to make you feel so behind. And when you're feeling stuck, we got to focus smaller. we got to just work on what absolutely positively has to get done now. Not three months from now, but right now. Okay, so those are my quick fixes for your to-do list overwhelm. Delete one thing, or multiple things if you can. Uh, put a boundary around your time, and... Stop working from your master to-do list. Create a small, tiny, daily to-do list. Sound good? Okay. I did want to quickly share the apps that I am using. So I'm using, uh, like I said, the Seconds app for um, for my timer, for whatever I'm, I'm working on. Um, and I, I do my 10 on, 10 off interval <laughs> during my worst days. But I also set it for other tasks that I need to do, like writing blog posts or recording videos or whatever it is. So that's seconds. Uh, that's just the, the name of the interval timer, timer app. And I love it because you can color coordinate things. You can make multiple custom timers. Uh, you can set the, the interval, like what's the on period, what's the off period. And, and it's really user friendly. I really love it. And then the other thing that I've been using is Trello. So Trello is a project management software. It's kind of, it's kind of like those Kanban boards where you, you, you move things from board to board to board as you are progressing through whatever project it is. It's kind of hard to explain. You should really watch the demo, but I used um, Asana for years, which is more like a list, a long like list of things to do. 
And uh, one of my clients got me hooked on Trello. And I really kind of like it because it's nice and visual, but I had to tweak it to make it work for my type A brain. So how I've been using it is I have uh, boards for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then I have, uh, well, I, and then I have separate boards for the projects and I put just the cards for each project on the day that I need to work on that. So I'm always like moving things around, <laughs> around the dates as I'm progressing through whatever it is I'm working on. So, so those are my favorite project management uh, productivity apps that I'm using. Seconds and Trello, those are like my two favorite that I use every single day. All right, oh, one last thing before I get to your questions, because a few of you did send me in questions that I'm going to, to answer. But what I'm reading right now is uh, I'm actually reading an audiobook called Kick-Ass with Mel Robbins. And uh, Mel Robbins is a really cool productivity expert. Uh, many of you have probably read her book, The Five Second Rule, which I love. I love The Five Second Rule. And she's got a uh, book with Audible. So it's an audiobook exclusively of her coaching her different clients. Uh, I think there's like eight of them. Um, and coaching them about different problems like procrastination and self-doubt and uh, being truthful. And it, it's really, really amazing. Um, so if you haven't listened to Kick-Ass with Mel Robbins, I highly recommend that you can get it on Audible. So that's what I'm reading right now and I love it. Okay. All right. Oh, Kirsten says she loves Trello. Yeah, Trello is pretty amazing if you haven't used it yet. Um, let's see. Okay, I got a few questions from you and Sorry, right, just organizing. Yes, okay. So we're gonna start with this one first. Oh, Hiromi has a, a comment. She says, uh, I like to do master to-do for my week in your planner, thank you, in the weekly to-do section and then write smaller tasks in the daily sections. I also do a monthly master to-do list in your dot grid section you provide for every month. And then I work there and break it down weekly to daily. Yeah, I can't stress that enough that we don't work from our master to-do list. You're gonna give yourself a heart attack if you do that. You've gotta work smaller daily daily little chunks. Um, and if anything is keeping you from moving forward, like look at your to-do list. If it's not a 10 minute task, it's too big and you need to break it down smaller. Um, so if you have like a task like write a blog post, that's not one step, but like you gotta like write it out, like choose a topic, write the headline, Open your Word document, <laughs> start typing, do the, do the outline, fill in the gaps, link up everything. Like there's so many different things underneath that. Um, and I work really hard to break down my tasks into things that will only take five to 10 minutes because that way I know I can keep moving forward all the time. Um, so yeah, if you're not moving forward on your to-do list, it might be because the next step is too big. Let's try breaking it down. Okay, so I got a few questions. Uh, real quick question uh, from Anonymous. We got an anonymous one. Um, she says, how can I make money online as a high school student? I'm finishing school. And we kind of mentioned this in our previous Ask Me Anything call, which was exclusively for the Silver Level members of the Life Editor Clubhouse. So if you don't know, we do Ask Me Anything calls twice a month. We do it one here in my uh, Facebook page, and then we do it once more in our private Life Editor Clubhouse Facebook group, which is exclusively for Silver Level members. So I answered a bit of this question in our, our last Ask Me Anything call, which you can watch in the Clubhouse, but this question came up again, so I'm gonna answer it again real quickly. So how do you make money when you're in high school and you probably don't have like a lot of resources available to you? Okay, my first question to you is if you wanna make money while you're working in high school, Figure out, can you travel or not? So that means like, do you have a car? Are you able to travel for your job? Or are you not? Are you stuck at home working from home or doing something that you can do around the house? Um, so if you can travel, obviously there's lots of options for you. You could try to get a job in a store of some kind, whether it's doing retail work or working at the mall or working at some kind of restaurant um, or a fast food establishment. And the reasons that I say that for, for high school students is one, I did that many, many years ago uh, when I was in high school. And I know things are a little different now, but it's easy work to get because there's a lot of turnover and uh, they need people. They need a lot of workers. Um, so I worked in the mall 
uh, for many years. I sold shoes <laughs> and I uh, sold women's clothes. Uh, and uh, yeah, and that's that's how I, I, I earned money because I, as a, as a vegan, I couldn't go work at a, a restaurant. Um, so I, I worked in the mall and that was good because I had a car so I could get to my job and, and come home. So the benefits of being able to, to have some kind of like retail or food experience like that is that it's flexible. It's super flexible. They know you're in high school so they can schedule you to work after school or work evenings or they can schedule you to work on the weekends. It's flexible. If you try to get like any kind of like desk job when you're in high school, it's probably a nine to five job and you can't do that while you're at school. Um, so it's flexible. And uh, a job like that might cover some of your college expenses, which is very, very helpful. Uh, depending on where you work, they might uh, help you with your college expenses or, or some other kind of benefits like that. So consider that if you can travel, that's a great way to to earn some money while you're still in high school. But if you can't travel, then you can get a little creative with the internet, something that wasn't around much <laughs> when I was in high school, back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. <laughs> so, so there's lots of places where you can get paid for your skills online, and there's far too many to mention, but, but here's just a couple quick ones. Fiverr, uh, which is a great place to start where you can uh, advertise what you can do for, for whoever, and uh, then people can hire you to do whatever work it is. Um, you can also search people's listings of what they need people to do, and you can pick up those jobs as well. Elance is a great one for freelancers. Thumbtack, again, if you have some kind of skill that you can help people with. Um, also, I know you said that you're in high school, and I hesitate to mention this, but I'm gonna mention it anyway, YouTube. Uh, there are a lot of young influencers on YouTube who are making a killing, mostly through advertising, um, through their YouTube channels. But I hesitate to say become like an online influencer because uh, recording videos, posting them to YouTube is going to take a lot of your time. And I don't want it to start interfe interfering with your schoolwork, but I will put that out there. If you already have a YouTube following, that might be something to consider. Another option is to start your own business. You can do that at home uh, by coming up with whatever your skills are, creating a website, and then marketing it to first your friends and family to see if you can get uh, them to hire you, and then doing some kind of uh, promotions on Facebook, Instagram, uh, wherever your ideal clients are. Like for me, my ideal clients are mostly coming to me from Pinterest, and then some are coming from Facebook. So I'm like, very active on Pinterest and Facebook, not so active on some of the other ones, um, but you figure out where your ideal clients are and you can market to them online. Um, if you have any questions about starting a business from home, uh, check out my Startup in 60 program, which is in the clubhouse. I keep saying like, go to the clubhouse, go to the clubhouse, because like, it's true. That's where everything is, everything's in the clubhouse. Uh, so Anonymous, I hope that answered your question that yes, you can definitely make money while you're still in high school, figure out can you travel or can you not travel, and then work accordingly. Um, and please check out, there's several great classes uh, in the clubhouse, particularly Startup in 60, if you're interested in starting a business so that you don't have to leave your house to earn money while you're still in high school. Okay. The next question that we have sent in, from Hiromi, and this one I think is gonna resonate with a bunch of you. Um, so she says, I believe I have high functioning anxiety. I get so stressed and short when things don't go well or as planned. I'm not very easygoing or a go with the flow kind of person, but I like to be organized or I'll go crazy. How do I balance this? Yeah, okay, so high functioning anxiety, not an easygoing person. I am right there with you. So first off, disclaimer, if you have some kind of anxiety disorder, please, please seek help from a medical professional or a counselor or a therapist or somebody who is actually trained to help you manage that. But let's say, like Hiromi says, high functioning anxiety. So let's just say you are an anxious person. You're a type A person. You're high strung. That's most life editors. That's, that's almost all of my life editors here. And it's definitely me. Um, here's how you can tell if you are type A, 
which is a little high strung, or if you're type B, which is more easygoing. So I always like to give this the, the scenario. Okay, picture this. You are going on vacation to a foreign country. You're very excited about you, but you do not speak the language in this country that you're visiting. All you have is a backpack full of your stuff. You don't have a hotel reservation there. You don't know where you're gonna get food. Uh, you, you're not really sure what sites you're gonna see. You're just going to get on the plane, go to this foreign country and wing it. That's what you have coming up. So if that sounds like a grand adventure, you are type B. If that sounds like your worst nightmare, you are type A. And that, that totally sounds like my worst nightmare. I could not imagine getting on a plane and <laughs> going somewhere without a hotel reservation, not speaking the language, not knowing what I would do. I would be like, ah! I would just like totally freak out. First of all, I probably wouldn't get on the plane. You'd have to like drag me on the plane um, because I'm, I'm high strung. I like things to be just so. I like my little schedules. I like knowing where everything is. So yeah, if you're type A with me, like I get it. But Hiromi's saying, what, what should she do when things don't go as planned? Because this is life and things don't always go as planned. So what are we supposed to do about it? Okay, I've got, I've got several tips for you. First, I want to talk about what to do when you're in the middle of it. Like you're in the middle of something not going as planned. It's blowing up in your face. You're in the middle of it. We're going to talk about that. And then I also want to talk about what you can do ahead of time so that as you go through life and things don't go as planned, what can you do beforehand so you don't freak out or get short and start strangling people? <laughs> okay, so when you're in the middle of it and something's going on and it's not going as planned and you're freaking out and you're about to start yelling, first step is to breathe. Just breathe. I know that sounds trite and silly, but do it anyway. Just take a few deep, calming breaths. I also recommend using a meditation app on your phone. Uh, the one that I use is called Insight Timer. Insight Timer, and it's completely free. And there are so many calming meditations on there, thousands of them. You can also just set a timer uh, for like ambient sounds like rainwater or, uh, or just like rustling leaves or whatever. You can set a timer for some kind of like white noise just to listen to. So breathe listen to something calming, do a calming meditation, whatever you need to do just to calm down. Like, so you don't like, I don't know, punch someone, just breathe, breathe. That's the first step. Second step is give people the benefit of the doubt. So if you are really mad because something's not going well and you think it's somebody's fault, give them the benefit of the doubt. So let's say you were supposed to meet someone for dinner and your friend is, hasn't shown up. Your friend is 30 minutes late and you're really, really mad. Give your friend the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she's caught in traffic. Maybe she's hurt and is on her way to the hospital. Maybe, I don't know, something happened and she needs to be somewhere else right now and she doesn't have access to a phone. Give people the benefit of the doubt because you don't really know what's going on. And here's the thing, it's not always about you. When someone does something like that, where they like don't show up for, for a date or they don't do something that they said they were going to do, it's not always about you. There could be other circumstances going on that you're just not aware of. And if you blow up at somebody and start screaming, I can't believe you did that. And then they tell you what really happened. You're going to feel embarrassed because you didn't just give them the benefit of the doubt. And you just didn't think that something else might have been going on. So that's the second thing. Like, Trust that people aren't intentionally <laughs> trying to make your life awful. And the third thing to do when you're in the middle of a bad situation and things aren't going as planned is to choose the easiest win. So yeah, things, things, things are bad. Things are, <laughs> are bad right now. What are you supposed to do? So maybe the easiest win is like, okay, so you, you went on vacation. Like this happens to a lot of people who come here to Orlando. You came here to Disney World and it is raining, it is, is pouring rain, or there's a hurricane coming through. And you're like, my vacation is ruined. Take a breath. <laughs> What's the easiest win? 
how can you salvage what's going on? Okay, so maybe you don't want to go walk around the parks all day when it's like uh, raining really hard. Although it is kind of fun going to the parks when it's raining because there's lots of like, there's like things are open there. There's no lines. You can get onto things, just wear your poncho and, and tough it out. So maybe that's the easiest win is to just put on a poncho and go do it. Or maybe the easiest win is to take the family and go to the movies instead. Can't go walk outside? All right, everyone's going to the movies. That's still something. Or maybe everyone comes inside and you look through your old picture books and share stories and, and laugh and drink hot cocoa together, something like that. So those are my three tips for when things aren't going as planned and you're in the middle of it right now. Breathe or meditate, give people the benefit of the doubt, and then choose the easiest win. What's the quickest thing you can do to get happy again? Okay, so that's what you do when things aren't going as planned and you're in the middle of it. But here's the other uh, thing to think about is what can you do before the next situation when things aren't going as planned? <sighs> I know. I don't know why us anxious people, us high-strung people, we think, okay, in the future things are gonna be better. In the future things are gonna go well. Like. We think things are, are going to like smooth out in the future and they just don't. This is life. This is life. Okay, so you can expect that things are not going to go as planned in the future. So here's how you can deal with it. First, practice being flexible in your daily life because you're going to have to be flexible in the future. So you might as well practice on little things now so that when you have to be flexible in the future, it's not so jarring. It's not so horrible. So maybe you can, um, you can do simple things like uh, when you, you go to the store and they don't have the thing that you wanted to buy, can you get a substitute and be okay with that or go without? Or uh, if you're, you're at a restaurant and they don't have your favorite meal, can you order something different and, and that be okay? Or if, uh, I don't know, your kids spill something on your favorite pair of pants and you have to throw them out. Can, can you be flexible with that? Can you say, okay, no problem. I'm gonna wear my other pair of pants today. So though all those little things where you're giving up control and saying it's gonna be okay, start with the, like the little ways that you can be flexible and work through those things. Cause then you'll, you'll be in good practice <laughs> when things go on, don't go as planned in the future. Okay, secondly, choose one must have. Here's what I mean by a must have. Let's say you know there's some kind of event coming up in the future and you're worried that things might not go as planned. Can you pick one thing, one aspect of that situation that you must have and you'll be willing to let everything else go if you have that one thing? So let's say you're going to the movies. All right, you're going to the movies with your family. What's the must have? Is the must have seeing that one particular movie okay, then if things don't go as planned and you get to the movie theater late, can you skip waiting in line for popcorn and go right to the theater? Uh, even if you have to like sit in a weird seat, uh, like right up in front, right up against the screen, because seeing that movie is the must have, like let all the other little things go, but you're seeing that movie. Or let's say you're going to the movies with your family and your must have is getting popcorn. Like you want your movie theater popcorn and that's why you're going to the movies. So if you show up late to the movies, you'd be okay standing in line for 15 minutes, getting your popcorn and missing the first half of the movie and having to like break up the seating so you don't get to sit by your, your kids or husband or whoever. Choose what your must have is. And then if things don't go as planned, stick to the must have. Stick to the must have and let everything else go. So at least you're getting a bit of what you wanted. And then my final tip for, for uh, being okay when things don't go as planned before you get to that situation is to give yourself order in other ways. So yeah, some things aren't going to go your way in life. And this happens to me too. Either I get sick when I don't wanna get sick or nobody buys my product <laughs> or whatever. Nobody signs up for the right thing. Or I'm doing a call like this and nobody's on or it's raining all day and I wanted to go out or whatever, things are going wrong. Can you find a way to have order some part of your day in some way? So for me, that's my morning routine. 
my morning routine is super orderly and I check off things that I do every single morning that make me feel in control and good. So even though my rest of my day might be totally wacky and completely nuts, it's okay because I got my morning routine. I have that little bit of control during my day. So it's something, it's something for me, especially when I'm feeling like super anxious and high strung, at least I've got my morning routine. So my morning routine is my meditation, uh, doing my oracle cards, doing my uh, mala chanting, uh, listening to uplifting music, doing my exercises, uh, writing in my gratitude journal, uh, talking to Chris, my husband. Um, <laughs> oh, Stacy just said, or a hurricane comes through your retreat weekend. Yes, yes, that has happened to me. <laughs> so, so where can you have some little bit of order in your day and hold to that? So maybe you are just like me and you have a morning routine that, that's very orderly and you feel good when you get that. Maybe it's planning your clothes every, every week, like laying out your clothes you're going to wear that week and that's how you can have order. Maybe it's meal prepping your food so you know what you're going to eat when. You don't have to think about it. Um, maybe it's like making sure you've got a babysitter for Saturday night so you've got date night. Date night is happening. Like the restaurant might be on fire, but date night is still happening. Like you've still got that. So uh, those are my, my tips. So let's go over this one more time. When things don't go as planned and you're in the middle of it, uh, breathe or meditate, give people the benefit of the doubt and choose the easiest win. And then beforehand, so that you can like better deal with life when things don't go as planned, practice being flexible. Find tiny little ways that you can be flexible during your day and it gets easier. You stop feeling so high strung, it gets easier. Choose one must have for important situations and then give yourself order in other ways. Like for me, that's my morning routine. So Hiromi, thank you so much for sending in your question. I hope that gave you a good answer for how you can learn to deal with things when things don't go as planned, even though they're kind of high strung <laughs> and anxious. I think that's a lot of us. All right, so let's see if you have any other comments or questions, please type them in the comment box and I'll answer them during the call. I will say that it is about balance, like like what you said in your your letter. There's always a balance in your life between things going just as you want them to versus things kind of not going how you want them to. And that's also what I was talking about at the beginning of this call, the balance between work, things that drain your energy, and the balance between play, things that give you energy. And since this is the, the get unstuck <laughs> call, our, our theme for today, I, I do want to stress that you can have balance in your life, but you really have to work at it. You have to make it a priority. So I do an 888 day for myself, which might not work for everyone, but it works for me. And, and if you're high strung, maybe it'll work for you too. So there's 24 hours in a day. I do eight hours of work. And that doesn't necessarily mean work where I'm like typing on my laptop and I'm working. It's things that drain my energy. So work might also be like, I don't know, grocery shopping when it's really crowded or whatever, whatever drains my energy. So eight hours of work and then I do eight hours of play uh, and play doesn't necessarily mean like playing a sport, but it could be um, reading magazines, which is important to me, watching uh, a movie with my husband, going for walks with my dog taking a bubble bath, whatever, things that give me energy and replenish me. And then I have eight hours of sleep. And I'm really, really big on getting my sleep. Because <laughs> you guys know, I know, like, you, you can you can tell when I haven't gotten enough sleep, because I'm like, oh, I'm like, not a very good coach. <laughs> so that's how I do, I do my day, eight, 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 eight hours of work, eight hours of play, and eight hours of sleep. I would love to hear how you balance your day and if you do something similar or how do you make sure that it's not just like give 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 all the time and you're actually taking to you're actually replenishing what you've lost all right I don't see any questions coming in but if you do have a question that you want to ask me you can type it into the comment box and I'm going to be coming back and answering your questions later if you're watching this at a later date 
right, and if you want to talk to me privately, you can always send an email to sage at sagegrayson.com or go to my website, sagegrayson.com, and uh, sign up for a free 30-minute life editing strategy call. We can talk exactly about how to get you unstuck and moving again. I just want to say that you're all human, and it's okay. It happens to me. It happens to everyone on this planet. We get stuck and we don't make progress, we miss deadlines, and it's okay. You can always get moving back, moving again, but I just want you to start taking the very, very smallest, tiniest step possible and, and just go from there. Um, so I hope this call has been helpful for you. We do this every month for our Ask Me Anything call, and we do it twice a month. We do it once more for um, our silver level, silver level members of our Life Editor Clubhouse. If you want to join the clubhouse, I will leave a link somewhere around this video. All right. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you are having a great week. I hope you get unstuck and keep moving forward. Weekend's coming, I promise. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you real soon. Bye, Life Editors.